Hi everyone, I am finally doing this on YouTube so that my followers on Instagram that aren't really into Facebook can see the energy updates that I have for um, weekly and uh, I might do them bi-weekly so I will do them again on Friday for the weekend. So I will be doing them on Sunday or Monday to do a weekly report and that will be talking about the energy that is surfacing daily and how one day leads into the other. I'm a collective reader, so I read the energy universally that's going on, and it may resonate with you or not, the energy that I pick up. So I really pick up where the mass energy is. So some of you that are not feeling what I'm saying, I might not be picking up on your particular energy because you are, you know, working on a different part of yourself that might not be a part of the collective. You're on a different journey. You're on a different path. And really, my readings aren't for everyone. So don't dwell on anything that I say. If it doesn't resonate with you, that's fine. That's completely fine. I can do a private reading for you and get you the guidance that you particularly need. But when I do these readings, I ask my guide, spirit, and source energy to let me know what most people need to hear, what many of you are going to resonate with, and what the collective energy is going to be in um that really just comes out in uh, tarot cards that I work with. I don't bother going over the cards. I don't bother saying what card came out because then you can get stuck on what you think the meaning of that card might be. And I just pick up on the energy of the card. I use uh, symbolism that I am drawn to and I work with that. And I leave it to be a bit spirit-led and I don't really do much... Um, preparation. Now that I've been recording these readings, I do write them down, um, how they come out a bit um, automatically. I automatic write them. So they come out in a notebook here. And I just, you know, do each day and I set up the energy for what I'm feeling. Um, I dropped. No cards. <laughs> Anyways, this is my first time doing this for YouTube. I don't really know how to edit anything, so forgive me. I try to keep this under 20 minutes. So when I was doing them on Facebook, people could have interrupted and come in while it was live. So I decided that this would be better. So just bear with me while I'm learning, and we'll be laughing together, hopefully, in the next couple of weeks as I progress doing these uh these videos on YouTube and I hope to get the software and things to make them a bit more professional. I don't know. I've been doing these now for several years on my Instagram here and there, but in the last several months I've been doing it regularly and I know my followers are enjoying it. So I'm just trying to reach a broader audience and bringing this to YouTube is going to offer me the ability to, you know, keep the readings more permanent just as Facebook did but the live aspect was a little bit funny for these readings because I don't really need feedback when I'm doing them that wasn't the the idea so I just am going to do them on YouTube and post these links you know to my other platforms but anyways we're on to the week of April 3rd and this week is all about limitations getting through some blocks fears hurdles and a lot of growth and transformation can be on the other side of the progress that we know we need to make. But really, these limitations are self-imposed. Your fears are an illusion. Your beliefs could be, you know, holding you back. And these could be your thoughts and ideas about money, the flow of money, love, and how love should be, you know, the love language that you have, how love should be given and received. Everybody has their own love language. Um, you might love one way and your partner another. Knowing different love languages is like knowing multiple languages to speak. So if you can speak Spanish and Chinese and, um, you know, travel the world knowing mul multiple languages, you can get further in life and you can really succeed in communicating with others. Same goes with love languages. If you are able to know how some people, you know, operate in a loving way, like others are givers, some are doers, some, you know, can spend and think that's a love, you know, that, that, that's how they give love. Whereas others need to be doted on and pampered and acknowledged. You know, we all have our different ways to give and receive love. So knowing those various love languages is going to help you um, immensely in your relationships and not just your unions that could be sexual or partnerships that are, you know, um, 
centered around the home. This is all kinds of relationships that you have. Knowing how to love others and pick up on the subtle nuances of their love language will help you love them and yourself better and really get away with um, making it a lot easier because we run into all these problems when we have expectations and expect others to love us the way we want to be loved or love the way we love. It just gets us into all kinds of trouble. But then we also have expectations and beliefs about money that are ingrained in us that are also going to come up this week. So if it's not about love for you, it might about be about money and abundance. And what 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 abundance truly is, isn't just money. It's time. It's uh, energy. It's help. It's resources that go way beyond money. So if you're only thinking about um, abundance in terms of money, you're really limiting yourself and the ability to receive from spirit and source energy. And this is just Monday's energy I'm talking about. A lot's going to surface in our life about, you know, the unbounced energy in some of these really important areas, love, money, finances. But it's really your thoughts on the matter that are hindering you the most and they're what holding that that's what's holding you back and you're playing the victim in a lot of ways so you're saying oh they don't love me well no you're not acknowledging the fact that they're loving you the only way they know how and they might not know your love language so you need to be open to expressing to them the way you want to be loved that's an important conversation you need to have um you aren't the victim. You are, however, the hero. So you can go and save your own day by choosing to think a new way and, you know, use your thoughts to help you in your situation and arrive at, you know, a, a healthy and balanced state of mind to get out of your situation. You may feel, feel um, powerless or weak or even downright ready to give up in your love or career or financial situations. But really, these, this is that pivotal moment that you've just got to give it a little bit more, um, that last punch and that last ditch effort, um, because you'll wiggle yourself free. Um, it's just the courage to escape these limiting thoughts and beliefs. And um, you can do a lot with the power of love. So love yourself more. Love your situation more. Ease into your situation with a bit more love. And know you're capable. Don't let your ego small egotistical mind get real big and tell you you can't do something that you know you can do which is you know better your love life better your financial situation go after your hopes and dreams you know you're self-sabotaging in a way a lot of the growth that you could be you know committed to and doing and already been um having gone through right now you could have already done so much more if you had quit playing the victim a little sooner in life so monday it's gonna we're gonna be confronted with these issues of what role did we have in our love finance career and making these situations better or worse so um tuesday that brings us to the thoughts on, well, what kind of history do I want to leave behind? Do I want to leave behind a legacy or a tragedy? And that's really up to you to create the life of your dreams. And that, and that really starts with Monday focusing on transforming your thoughts into pro proactive solutions and approaches to getting the love you want and giving the love that you know you can give, um, getting the money that you deserve and mentally understanding that you deserve it because a lot of our holdups with money are really mental constructions that have been uh, passed down to us in our living situation so they're formulated early on in our lives and we're, we're stuck with a, a poor mentality or a rich mentality that could get us into trouble either way you know you grow up poor and you're in a poor state of mind so you live impoverished you 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 don't spend empowered and it could go the other way you could grow up rich and not understand the meaning of money and really just spend frivolously so it could go either way and it's really um up to you as the person here in this lifetime to utilize your situation to the best. So somebody that grows up in a poor situation could rise up and know what it's like to come from a poor situation and give back better and, and, and receive money more humbly. Whereas someone in a rich situation could rise to their power by realizing they don't need all this extra money and donate it wisely and give in a healthy, respectable, you know, honored way. If you're in a position of power, you should be in a position of power to give and, and give effortlessly and easily to others. Some of us have money mindsets that block money because like me, I used to care so much about, you know, the energy behind money not being right. Like I never felt right about money. 
I never wanted that to be the end all be all. I don't, I didn't want to be paid for even my gifts and services because I just thought, Oh, I'll exchange the energy. The energy will be enough. Well, energy isn't putting food on the table. Energy isn't, you know, paying for the bills that need to be paid for money is so money is a fine energy. It's one we've all collectively decided we're going to use to pay for things that we need in society and life. So unless you're living off grid and not using money in a way that you need to support yourself, whatever, more power to you, you need to get your mindset right about money. You need to know you're deserving of having all your needs met financially and abundantly having your needs met. So having more than you need so that you can give and do and not worry and and wonder where your next, you know, paycheck's going to come from. But you also need to be proactive about changing this this cycle or this this exchange of energy. You need to say, I do have some uh, crazy ideas about money that aren't healthy for me. Um, some of us could be jealous about the way other people spend their money, and that's hindering your own money and abundance coming in. It's none of my business what they spend their money on. They made the money if they're buying it, coach purses or whatever. Who cares? I, I don't care. I don't like coach purses. I don't need a coach purse, but I don't need to judge somebody for what they spend their money on. Now, if they're spending their money on a coach purse and their kids aren't being fed, that's a little different. You know, we all need to work on our relationship with money and abundance and love and life. And this week, it's going to go a bunch of different ways for all of us because we're all doing our own growth. So many things are going in retrograde this um, this April that, you know, we're all doing work in various areas repeatedly that we needed to have done and committed to almost cycles ago. But, you know, it is what it is. One day, one cycle, one, you know, one turn of the earth at a time. That's all we can do. The sun comes up, the moon goes down. And you know, it's, some of it isn't even your own mindset. It's been passed down to you, as I said. So you're cleansing and clearing DNA karma that was, you know, you signed up for when, before you came here to earth. Like you said to your guides and your spirit people and your soul center, you said, I can take on this challenge. I can do and work through all these problems. So you know what? Your godly self is here now to do that. So you need to know that you can. Um, and, and these, 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 Issues that you have are only areas for you to create growth and spiritual gifts and awakening and understanding that only enable you to better manifest the life and dreams that you want. Um, you know, how you choose to use them is up to you. We're all handed an ability to get out of our situation. It's just up to us to, you know, utilize that ladder and climb out. Um about legacy though it's it's up to you how you're going to leave how you choose to leave behind what you've accumulated and what you've created you know are you going to use it all for yourself and enjoy it or are you going to feel bad and leave it for your kids you know there could be an equal balance and share are you doing everything just for your kids and not for yourself you know the legacy you choose to leave behind needs to be built with integrity and honor and if you work yourself to the bone just to provide for your kids and not ever you know hold them accountable and make them you know rise up to the occasion and grow on their own because oh, I had it so hard and I want to make it so easy for them. That's that passed down um, karma that was accumulated in your childhood upbringing. It's not DNA blueprint karma, but it's just something that you were born into believing because you didn't have everything you want. You're going to give it to your kids in a way that they're going to be provided for, you know, beyond, beyond belief. Well, that's not always going to make them better having everything they need. They'll never work for it. So, there's, there's something you've got to decide here, how you're going to use what you have in your life, how you're going to leave behind what you can. And energy wise, I just want you to, to leave behind your heart. I don't, as long as you're doing from the heart and giving from the heart and, and being considerate of yourself, you know, thinking about yourself too, you're going to leave behind an excellent legacy. I wouldn't really worry about it. Um, and, um, you're going to leave behind a secure world taking care of yourself and not just your children filled with love. Um, so it's up to you, you know, it's really up to you what you want to do as far as leaving your legacy and your, um, your history and how people, you know, think about you when you're gone, that like it all, it all, we're all working on that every day. Um, now I'm wishing I could change some of this uh, video cause I just rambled a lot, but what are you going to do? We're on to Wednesday. Um, Wednesday is one of those, you know, sure it's hump day, but it doesn't mean you, you, 
you can't celebrate like it's the weekend. Like we can celebrate every day. We just worked through Monday and Tuesday, which was a lot of growth um, internally digesting our thughts and our beliefs and reformulating some um, thoughts and how they're how they're not benefiting us. We need to change that. It's a lot of work. So, you know, I, I want to say that you can celebrate today and celebrate any day, everything in moderation. Um, and if you aren't living a life filled with joy and happiness, like we were saying, that legacy, what are you leaving behind if it's not happiness and joy and from the heart? You know, you can accumulate all this wealth and leave that behind, but that's not really what your children want at the end of the day. They want you and time spent with you. So maybe use your accumulated wealth and time and energy to go on a trip and spend spend some memory making time with them. Um but anyhow, we're on to Wednesday. So, you know, celebrate your existence, celebrate your work, celebrate your growth, celebrate, you know, um, the people, the places and things in your life, big, little, all of it um, is worth celebrating. We get so hard on ourselves working diligently on the introspective work and uh, assimilating then back into society because not everybody's working as hard as we are. So it's hard to integrate back into us like into our career and social uh, structures because we are doing so much work that we almost feel like an alien when we come back into the reality of our lives. Uh, we, we spend those weekend retreats or those, you know, hours and hours and hours working and working and working on our inner dialogue and growth that when we come back to reality, it's a bit harsh and it's like a thud back to earth. Like, oh God, how hard was that fall? But really you can celebrate falling back down to earth and enjoying the reality of your life because you are working so hard. And when you're shaping and changing your mind, you're shaping and changing your physical reality world in front of you. So take the time to enjoy what you're manifesting then right there in front of you. Um, notice it, see it, enjoy it. Um, you can't be all work and no play. You really can't. Even in the middle of the week, there's time to enjoy all the work that's been done. Um, um, you've got you've, you've got one life also. So while we work on a Monday through Sunday schedule, many of us and we're we're you know running around on the weekends because we work Monday through Friday. That's just not how the world really is. So we're stuck in this paradigm of like work, work, work. Then we get to play. Well, that's not true. Why don't we balance the scales a bit more, and then we'll be enjoying the work more because the rewards are that much more sweet. Uh, people that are all work and no play get burnt out and it's just not life is not that hard and it shouldn't be that rigorous and and if you're working that hard just to make sure your kids have an iPad and all the shit that they need I think oh that's the clock get familiar with that because that'll probably be in like all of my readings at some point in time well until I go back west which is like two more weeks but anyways you know what are you accumulating all this wealth for if you can't enjoy it? You know, you don't need to just leave this legacy behind for your children because the best legacy you can leave behind for them is one filled with memories and enjoyment that you, you spent on them with them, not just left behind for them to accumulate on their own. Um, so, so long as you're with good company and um, where your heart wants to be, then it's easy to also, it's, it's easier to celebrate and enjoy life. So if you have, people in your life that you're tired of, if you're not interested in, it's time you also think about, you know, your enjoyment and your own personal happiness. Is it worth keeping these people in your life that you don't really enjoy? That might come up on Wednesday for you. But um, celebrate like a child. Each moment in life is really spectacular. Like, ooh, look at that. Ooh, look over there. It's that crazy beautiful. It's that worth like getting excited about and celebrating. But anyways, now we're on to Thursday. Thursday, it's time you take a risk and, um, you know, step up your game, step up to the plate and go for it. We were saying on Monday and Tuesday how, you know, you mentally were sabotaging yourself and holding yourself back. You, you held the power there to change your situation and thought pattern and inner dialogue to hopefully shape and change your reality. So really it's time now you, um, you really just go for it. Step up to that plate and hit a home run. You are ready to put this new thinking and methodology to work. So you're ready for um, a little adventure to test out and like scientifically test out this new thinking pattern. So you were you you went from one negative form of thinking to a positive, healthier form of thinking, and now you want to yield results and see if it really works. So I'm suggesting Thursday you go out and figure 
um, out your weekend and decide, okay, so how can I get this better thought process going? So if you've been stuck at home every weekend and you're looking to date and you're one of those people that's having a love language issue, you know, you're, you're working out those kinks. So now Thursday, say, um, like just have some positive affirmation shoot those out there and say you know I'm going to run into some great people because love language isn't just about sex and love and those sort of relationships it's about friendships and unions so you might say um, I'm going to run into some great people Thursday or Friday and we're going to make some awesome plans for this weekend and prepare yourself energy wise for what's to come you know you've got to dream it to receive it and believe it to receive it so visualize it let it sink in and marinate and really get those ideas shooting Thursday because you're craving adventure and you've got to make it happen. You can't sit around waiting for the fun and exciting times to come your way. You've really got to create them on your own. Um, and the manifesting starts with a thought, then action. And, um, action would be the next step here. So you've already done a lot of the thinking work. Now it's time you put yourself out there. So maybe go ahead and say, hey, what's everybody doing this weekend? Put yourself out there because you've been so busy working on yourself. Others might not even approach you. They might say, oh, she's so busy. She's going to say no. I don't even want to bother her and have her come up with some excuse why she can't go out with us. So you've got to put yourself out there because that's what the people are thinking. Like you're just going to say no anyway. So why should they even bother inviting you out? Whereas you do want to go out. So you need to put yourself out there. Um, they might not be including you because you've been quite the recluse lately. And that that's just, they might even be afraid of your energy. Like, oh, we don't really want to hang out with her. But the more you put yourself out there and, and get with the flow of everybody else's energy around you, the easier it'll be to participate and enjoy um, the social activities with them. And even with your partner, if you're if you're not resonating with your partner lately, energetically put it out there and mentally visualize how you'd like things to um, change for you. Or if you'd like to have more exciting weekends and stuff, especially with spring now opening up our you know weather situation on the East Coast and some areas of the West and Midwest. Um, you know, it's time now to not sit around and wait for the fun to happen, but make the fun happen. Create those fun times. You can't just wait around for others to do it for you. I mean, you, God won't help those that won't help themselves. You've got to get out there and get motivated and put yourself out there to have this social life that you actually want. Um, so put yourself out there. Go for it. Go a different route. Go somewhere different for lunch tomorrow or on on. Thursday. I'm talking about Thursday. Um, you know, make plans with people that you don't normally make plans with. There, you know, there's there's excitement to be had. You're just not really looking for it. You're you're complaining and victimizing yourself, saying, "Oh, I don't have fun." Well, that's because you're not putting yourself out there. So, really, you got to do that on your own. Um, we're not like you're not a child anymore. Nobody's setting up play dates for you. You've got to set them up. Some of us struggle with that because maybe we moved a lot as children or we just like struggle with trust and intimacy issues. But really, if you're ready to be more open and vulnerable with people, you've got to make that first step and be available and be open to going out and hanging out and making plans and I know some of us aren't really the plan makers and many of us are like the tag alongers and I'll, oh whatever you decide to do that's fine I'll go along with it but we've got to be more proactive and really take charge and take our power back and decide what we want to do we can't just be along for the ride anymore we've got to start driving the car and driving in the direction of our hopes and dreams and fun and enjoyment and pleasure so um Friday some of us may feel defeated, like you couldn't do it, like you just couldn't muster up the courage to go put yourself out there and be vulnerable and ask for fun times to come your way. So Friday, you some of us could be, you know, defeated and feel like we are stuck at home again on a Friday night and um, it's we're not like something you're doing is not enough. It's not enough for you to sit back and dream about what you want. You've got to really go out there and get it and your growth will happen. Um, and importantly, your happiness will arrive once you do start putting yourself out there. You know, spirit can only provide for you in the ways that it knows. So if you're not even asking or having a dialogue with spirit yet about what you want, I suggest you start there journaling and talking to yourself and God and or source energy, whatever you want to call it, about what you want to arrive in your life. You can't just keep wishing and hoping. It's not enough anymore. You've got to be a little bit more direct, concrete, and 
honest with yourself and your situation and spirit and source will provide for you then. And you've got to be willing to also help them meet them in the middle, you know, meet spirit in a way that's like, like, okay, they're in it. They really do want to do this. And then spirit's going to one up you and one up you and keep making it easier and easier for you. So anyways, you're getting in the way of your own growth. And more importantly, your happiness, your inner dialogue could be damaging too. So, you know, this is what we talked about already on Monday and Tuesday. You need to change your thought patterns, beliefs, and um, those neural circuits, those inner neural circuits in your brain were formulated so many times ago, but they can be crushed and rebuilt and repatterned to think in a better, healthier, more, you know, uh, in, a, in a way that can actually manifest your life as opposed to blocking the energy that you choose to receive. And that's all just your, you know, inner dialogue and inner thought process um, and feeling like you're the victim or feel attacked when you can really be taking these situations and turning them around because things are happening to you, for you, for your best interest if you're in line with your authentic self. Now, if you're not in line with your authentic self, you're going to look at these things as hindrances, blocks, and instead of the, the blessing that they truly are, are because sometimes the biggest curse could be the biggest blessing and if you're not in line with your authentic self you're not going to know that so on friday you know you're going to feel a bit defeated especially if you were aware of the work that needed to be done thought you did it like or you skimmed over it you you just barely did the work well it's not going to work out for you and you're going to feel like what what's the use why even try because guess what the more you try the better you get at it. It's like riding a bike. You got to get back up and put yourself out there again. If you're coming out of a love relationship, if you're coming out of a financial hardship, if you're coming out of like a trans transformational period in your life, you've got to put yourself out there to experiencing the newness that's coming towards you. You could be in this holding zone almost of um, change that's just close enough to grab, but you've got to extend yourself. You've got to reach for the change. And you've already done a lot of the work, but but you're not quite at the finish line there yet. So anyways, um, um, there's a point to it all. There's a reason you're working this hard. You know, you don't need to just stop because you feel like, all this hard work is for nothing. It's just you're not working hard enough. You're not being honest about it. You're you're doing that whole victimizing thing. And really, if you're not getting the results you want, then something is still off. Something you're doing is still wrong energetically. Um, your self-defeating ways are resurfacing um, also because of all these retrogrades going on. So be proactive. Um I, I just, I, I can't say it enough. It's really, it's in your power. It's your fault. It's, I don't want to be that rude, but really it is. It's almost like you've been told enough times. You've been helped enough times. You had enough time to prepare. You, especially if it's something financial or, or if it's a love situation, it was, it was already looming. You already knew that this day was going to happen and you didn't prepare enough for it. So I'm sorry. It's like, I don't even want to be sorry. I want to be like tough love. Like this is your situation. You created it. Anyways, um, it's a moment of weakness, um, a low. And um, don't do or say anything you're going to regret just because you're not where you want to be. That could also be coming up Friday. So like you're doing all this hard inner work and it's getting really difficult. And you're almost like at that point where you're about to transform and turn into that butterfly. But that freedom and security of, you know, taking flight is not going to happen until it's, until you're completely mature and ripe enough. Like that, that little cocoon that the butterfly comes out of, it's got to be perfectly right. And your time isn't right yet if you're, if you're still experiencing this hardship and setback. Like you weren't ready to change your thoughts. You're not ready to do the work. Um, but like I said, it's up to you and I'm sorry that it's just, it's, tough it's tough work it's inner work and it's if it was easy um we wouldn't be ha having reincarnation as often as we do like not everybody gets it right every lifetime and you get so many opportunities to get it right that it's like now it's your fault at the end of the day if you're not catching up with everybody else and doing the work it's your fault that's like this whole 5d thing every everything's getting faster and faster and faster material you know materializing right before us everything we're manifesting so you need to be wise with your thoughts your words your actions and really get in alignment with your higher most authentic self 
so I wasn't really originally going to do the weekends, but I decided I might as well do the weekends. Um, so Saturday, it's time. Like I'm saying, you finally realize you are your own worst critic, enemy, setback. You are really the key factor to all the things going wrong in your life. So like when somebody has to bitch and complain about their life, all these areas of their life, I almost have to wonder, well, what's the key uh, reoccurring theme? You, you are the are the center of your life. So if your love life is shitty, your financial life is shitty, your career is shitty, your energy is shitty. Well, I got to say, you have something shitty going on about you. And it might very well be the way you think and talk about the world you live in. So you need to get your mind right, your inner dialogue right, your drive and your passion in alignment with your higher self, your most authentic self. Right. And that starts with doing the inner work that is a bitch. It's hard to do. And that's why we almost like we fall when we come back to reality. Those that are working deeply on themselves and they're meditating and they're doing the chakra work. They're doing the healthy eating and changing their habits as far as energy goes and what they put in their body and in their minds and visually stimulating themselves with only the best and healthiest things. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to come back to reality. But it's, it's just where we take all the work. What are we doing all that work for if we can't utilize it in reality? So, you know, it's, it's time on Saturday. You're kind of sitting there, especially if you didn't make any plans with people and you didn't have those breakthroughs that I thought you would Wednesday, Thursday. You're sitting there almost like stunned by the realization that like it was all your fault it, it you are the missing link you are the victim and the hero you are the only one that can save your day like and people are actually getting kind of tired of helping you and I hate saying that but that's because they got their own shit to do this is collective energy report we're all doing it and going through it so it's like I'm tired of hearing how hard you have it because guess what? I have it equally as hard, but I'm going to turn my situation around and make things the best they can be. And I understand that things are happening to me and for me, not like because they're bad for me. Like things are happening in a way to shape and change you for the best. So if you're feeling stuck, look within for that ladder to climb out. I mentioned it before, you know, the, the inner work is the only way out of your situation. It's an inside job. So work with affirmations and techniques to change your mindset, your love languages, understanding them, your money mindset, your career mindset, knowing that you have a gift, an ability that's worth money and um, you should be able to profit off of it. You know, all of these are mindsets that we have that have been imposed on us either through our living situations, societal pressures, you know, a lot of it outside of us, but then the way we just decide how we're going to perceive things. So we need to change our perception and mindset and dialogue as far as these energy um, exchanges go. So Sunday just really comes down to nurturing yourself. So whether you push through and got through on Wednesday and Thursday and you found yourself like growing and really, you know, testing out these new uh, ways of thinking and seeing how they're bettering your life or whether it was you found more blocks and more hurdles and more setbacks. Either way, Sunday is a time to nurture these fresh new feelings, thoughts, wounds, changes. All of it um, could make you very sensitive. As you're transforming your mind and life, you need to be ready to get back into self-love because the more you unsurface these things about you that are hindering and creating blocks, it hurts and it's hard to say to yourself, I was the block, I was the problem. So you've got to be good cop and bad cop. So while you're doing the hard and tough work, you've also got to do the self-love and rededicate to journaling, taking baths, nurturing with good teas and, um, you know, healthy foods and affirmations and dream work and um, meditations and all kinds of activities that replenish the soul because you're 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 polishing that soul and you almost need to you know put a little lubrication back on it because you're 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 rubbing away so much dirt and grime that it could be hurting and and sore on the body and especially as you purge these thought processes and and um, this inner dialogue that's not healthy for you it's just like getting sick. You're purging things out of the body that aren't necessary. So as you cleanse your mind and, and uh, reshape your life through, through thinking, be ready to be kinder to yourself. It's hard work, especially this introspective work. And the more you put um, 
Um, the more you put in, though, the more you'll get out. So really, it's worth it. The work is worth it 100%. And as I said, it's truly an inside job. Um, celebrate though, the work that you've done. And as you recalibrate your energies, um, they'll, they will match the desired frequency that you need to get what you want, deserve, and dream about. You know, you've just got to change your mindset about it. And really, that's you're, you're the only thing standing in the way. It's nothing outside of you. It's all inside and it's especially inside your mindset so i i just i wish you all so much power so much magic and so much happiness and i want you to know that you have the power and the magic is in it's inside of you you've got to just you know keep chipping away at it and it's tough it's hard i mean it's so worth it though this is one of those things that the reward will exceed tremendously tremendously exceed you know the work because what you're really working on is so, so much deeper than most people even like scratch. So I'm proud of all of you and especially you, like those of you that have been watching the energy updates. You know, we're just coming out of a very explosive week where we might have been jealous and taking action and really deciding to commit to the work. So now we're scratching the surface and we're realizing how deep and dark and, 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 thick the the work this jungle of work is but you know some of us might see the light a little sooner than others like I said on Friday and and realize like it'll click like oh it is just a mental game that I've been playing with myself and I've been you know hindering myself in so many ways just because of a thought process you know so anyways take the time Sunday to nurture these fresh ideas and wounds that have been you know opened and picked at and um uh, you know, nurture the growth if that happened for you too, because I, I try to, you know, do it both ways. Some of us are in one place while some of us are in another place and I want to be available to all of you. So if any of you need a private reading, that's easy to do. You can just get that scheduled with me through my shop, Benford's All Naturals. I do Vedic Insight, which is really helping people through a lot of blocks that they have because they grow up, like I said, with a mindset that has them thinking they might be one sign when in actuality, they could be closer to another sign due to a backwards tilt in the earth. So if you're all about energy like me, you want to get it as precise and close as you can. So when I explain to you the signs that you are for your sun and your moon and your Mercury and your Mars and your Venus, it's like, whoa, mind blowing because you might resonate with these readings a bit more. Not these readings that I do for the week, but these Vedic readings that I give a bit more than you do the traditional horoscopes that you read um, in your newspaper and online um, that you grew up believing because you could be one sign ahead. So anyways, I love you all. I'm going to try to keep these under 20 minutes in the future. This is my first YouTube video, so enjoy it. I had a lot of fun doing it, and I'm, I'm looking forward to doing them in the future. So have a good one, everyone.